half points, takes the match. We're at one and a half, one and a half tie. The next win, it's match over. We're off. It's game four, and a Queen's Gambit declined. Black not taking on c4. It's the Slav defense. Will we see a repeat of game two of this uh, winner's final? No, Denis Lazvik switches things up. He pushes a pawn where earlier he brought the white knight out. Uh, so Magnus, the first to pause, um, the first to think. We could see still see similar positions, transpositions, but Magnus regaining his composure here. Tanya, what do you make of his body language? <sighs> Clearly, uh, and understandably, it seems to have affected Magnus. It definitely did. We saw him at the end of game three. Magnus was angry. He was swearing right there. He, he couldn't believe what had just happened. We could see that on the camera. And now he's got to come back. But the one thing that's scarier than Magnus is an angry Magnus. And that's what Dennis has to face right now uh, with the black pieces. Magnus going for the Slav. He goes for this bishop g4 variation. It's not one that I've played with the black side. Uh, Robert, break down the plans for us. How do you see this one progressing? And is Magnus just trying to stop the bleeding and take this to Armageddon? Magnus is taking the solid approach because as we look at the pawn triangle in the center, uh, black has all of these pawns on light squares. Only white has a light square bishop. So for Magnus Carlsen, you typically prefer to play with the pair of bishops as a high level player. But he's saying that I've shut down open diagonals. Even pawn trades won't give it the full length of the board that it would like to uh, use to its advantage. So I think Magnus, he just wants to play quickly. He wants to play solidly. But David, I mean, look at his face. He is still bothered about what's just happened. Um, understandably, as we said, Magnus, he's the number one. He's the GOAT for a reason. And he's not used to being in situations like this where a young pretender, a young rascal comes along and uh, kind of knocks him and uh, kind of threatens to kick him off his perch. But um, yeah, he needs to recover Magnus. And I think he's doing the right thing. I like Black's opening choice here. I like the fact that Magnus has uh, gone for this really renowned uh, solid variation uh, because ultimately Dennis doesn't want to take too much risks either. Yes, he's riding a high. Yes, he just beat Magnus, but uh, it's not his style, Dennis, to kind of uh, kind of set the pace to be the one pushing and pushing and kind of taking risks. So Magnus, he's saying, okay, if you want to win, come at me. Uh, I'm happy to just recover. And uh, as you mentioned, Robert, rock solid from Black. The pawn formation, the skeleton of Black's position, no real issues here yet, at least. Um, let's have a reputation. I've played this myself of being slightly passive for Black. Again, White has the bishop pair, a factor we talk about long term. But uh, ultimately, yeah, this game... I think it could have gone worse for Magnus if he'd uh, kind of been too emotional and wanted to strike back uh, immediately. So he's just trying to, uh, now with this trade of pawns, break open the center. I'm expecting pawn to e5 now. And uh, he's trying to uh, neutralize Dennis, try and get out of this game. And I don't think either of us would complain, right, Tanya, if uh, we saw an Armageddon. <laughs> Absolutely. I think uh, if this match goes down to the wire, if any match deserves to go down to the wire, it is this one. And it's going to be a spicy Armageddon. Speaking about who wants to push, well, Dennis isn't going to be a push over in the Armageddon. He's taken down Anish Giri. He's taken down Maxime Vacher Le Graf in the Chassable Masters in the Armageddon. He's going to be taking a lot of confidence from that. The E5 break that you were alluding to in the current position, I think that's definitely on Magnus's radar. He's just preparing it a little bit. First falls back with that bishop. White can start pushing his own central pawns, try to take uh, that space with E4, which I think will be met by your move E5, David. It's on the board, and uh, at least E4 is with a big, big threat. White wants to play E5, so surely Black has to stop it here. Um, that would be a fork, a double attack if white steps forward one more square. And there we go. Magnus does indeed block. And uh, now, okay, Dennis advances, locking the center, sometimes uh, not favorable if you have the bishop pair. But here it's all about control of the light squares. Magnus doesn't want to allow white to sit with a protected pass pawn forever. But if he ever trades on the d5 square, white's light square bishop will gain in power. Robert, I like Dennis's last couple of moves. He's showing ambition here. It looks nice for white. This bishop on c4 is a much better piece than it was a few turns ago because that pawn triangle, all in light squares, blocking its diagonals, that's no more. And it will open up towards the black king at some point. But look at Magnus. He says, all right, I concede that your bishop will be strong, but how about my bishop on c5? How about some of the control that my knights will get? This knight can wrap around to b6 at some moment. So both players, uh, they need to figure out 
what the optimal squares are for their pieces. And it's actually not that easy. One big decision is should white take on c6 to isolate both of black's queenside pawns, but it Isolated pawns, open files. An open B file could be useful for black, and that's why Dennis, he keeps the status quo, and he maintains a slight pull. I think this one is very likely heading to that Armageddon that we're looking at with that last trade and a queen trade being offered to Magnus. You've been talking about body language, looking at him. Uh, David, I think this game for him is about calming down and just knowing that, you know, with the black pieces, doesn't want to lose control of anything, and we take this uh, fight there. But now the big question is, do you trade queens, especially against Magnus here? Normally, I would say <laughs> no. Don't do it against the best endgame player of all time, the endgame maestro himself. But here you do gain a bit of time, potentially. He drops back, though, Dennis Lazovic, uh, fearing those words, maybe echoing in his ears. Don't trade queens against Magnus. But uh, now at least the structure changes. And um, Dennis... I was going to say, is he going to take back with a pawn? Maybe the most ambitious move, but be saddled with an isolated pawn of his own? Uh, or does he play it safe? Does he take back on the square with a piece, the bishop, the knight? Um, Spoiled for choice here. Um, at least on the camera, visibly, Magnus seems to have calmed down. Robert, what do you make, okay, of this knight capture from Dennis? I thought we might get this continuation because the risk associated with isolating your own pawn Sure, you would have had a pass pawn. I don't think that's Dennis's style. I don't think he wanted any part of that. And this looks very level. And this move queen back to e7. And so that when or if black takes on d5 and the rook takes back, the queen isn't hit. So it's a bit of a prophylactic move. It's a defensive move. And I actually think that if Dennis isn't careful, knights can outclass bishops because this bishop is on its optimal square. But later down the line, if you can envision a knight somewhere out on an important dark square, maybe f4, maybe d4. It's a long ways away, so I don't think it's going to happen. But knights can be very jumpy, tricky pieces. So Dennis just can't assume it's going to be a draw. Magnus, he typically plays on if there's any life left. Magnus doesn't look too lively right now, though. Uh, too energetic. <laughs> um, I think if he wants to get this game towards safety, there we go. He'll happily trade off all the rooks. And uh, Robert, that dynamic you mentioned, queen and knight versus queen and bishop, uh, yeah, maybe some chances long term. Uh, so Dennis shouldn't relax too early, never relax against the top players, of course. Mm. But uh, ultimately, Tanya, I think your prediction, draw an Armageddon looks by far the most likely outcome right now. And you mentioned queen and knight versus queen and bishop. It gives chances to the side with the knight because they can get tricky. But if even the queens come off, if it's just a pure bishop versus knight endgame with pawns on both flanks, it's actually white with the bishop, a long range piece that can start pushing a little bit. The king can come out, the bishop can be on d5, controlling more of the board. So it's really about who manages to get the ideal trades in. Uh, but I think both players are making quick moves, quick improving moves. And we are going to see either the queens come off or the rooks come off. But I highly doubt that this will head to a pure bishop versus knight, because in that case, Dennis will be the one who will be pushing. Yeah, that would not be good uh, to get bishop versus knight. Uh, I think that uh, with the knight where it currently sits, it covers uh, many key squares. And don't be surprised when Magnus throws his h-pawn forward. Uh, right now is one option. He could also play on the queen side. I just feel like some of Black's moves are a little bit easier to play than White's. Uh, this open d file, it looks just as strong as the open c file. Uh, but I, I don't know. Something about this position is making it difficult for me to see what White's actual plan is. David, do you see anything for either side, honestly, and how you can play for more than just equality? It's tough. I think uh, ultimately the position is equal. I would have said, actually, until this last move, that Magnus is going to play his trademarks. He's going to play h5, just to tickle, pretend that he's uh, pushing some pawns forward on that flank uh, towards the White King. And he might play a5, pretend he'll push the b-pawn as well uh, on the other flank. But I think Magnus's mood is uh, different right now than it was earlier in the day. He's just happy to guide this game towards safety. And um, yeah, rook to d4 might be the only way to imbalance things. You pointed it out there, Robert, on the, uh, on the board. Rook d4 would have changed the pawn structure potentially. But uh, now that the rooks are off, yeah, it looks too symmetrical. Look at the pawn structure. Pretty much almost symmetrical. Should still be a draw. But queen and knight, we mentioned. Would choose black slightly if I had to. Uh, I wanted to ask the question, though. Assuming that this one stays level, who do you think is the happier player? And who do you think wants black in the Armageddon? Wow, that's a, that's a tough one. But I think it's a really important question, David, because I think both players will try and get 
the result odds. They will try to get the black pieces. But then how low can you actually go to attain that? I don't know who's going to win the Armageddon bid, but I am predicting a, a, a bid around six and a half minutes uh, by these players. What about you, Robert? I think that Dennis, yeah, he has shown a willingness to get low on the clock. He also just brought his king out into the open. You can use your kings as weapons in the endgame, everybody, although now Black is aiming at a pawn. But to answer the Armageddon question, yeah, I think that Magnus, he's willing to go quite low. He's been way faster in this match thus far. For Dennis, uh, yeah, I feel like seven minutes is probably the lower limit just because he constantly finds himself in time trouble and he won't have increment to rely on. So I feel like Dennis he'll, will probably end up with the white pieces. Mm. Answers, David, guys. you, you got to answer your question too. We're not going to let you <laughs> off the hook so easily. <laughs> I was about to deflect and uh, try to dodge that one. Um, but I agree. I think uh, both players will be quite keen, especially Magnus now after this last game, uh, to get the black pieces. Magnus lost with white, so why not try to get black? Um, I also wanted to point out the accuracy this game. I mean, it's such a high-class game, and sometimes, ultimately, a, a draw is a logical result in chess. 98% accuracy for both players. Um, yeah, I think Magnus would love black, and he might go lower than we expect. I think he'll be super keen to get the uh, draw odds. Uh, but right now, a pause for Magnus, a bit of a frown on the camera. Do you think he'll try and uh, grind this one? We keep saying uh, tickle uh, Dennis here, create some threats, pawn to h5. We predicted, actually, both the rook's pawns starting to march here, Robert. Typical Magnus, and he may even throw that pawn one step further, because if white responds with g4, this may be hard to visualize for some, you're just giving black all of the dark squares. So when your opponent has a knight and you have a light square bishop, how can you control dark squares if your pawns are on dark squares since they capture diagonally? So you have to be very careful here if you're Dennis Lazvik. I know that the bar is in the middle, the draw seems to be the likely result, but I, we've seen it from Magnus countless times in his illustrious career you take one move off and suddenly you're in trouble so does white stop that but give black this very important g4 square looks a bit worrisome to my eyes do you allow black to play h4 and then harm white's pawn structure also looks problematic i do think that dennis has to invest some serious time here and he's already down almost three minutes on the clock why should magnus just make a run actually his latest move allows black to play h4 this is risk-free chess from the number one player and uh, on your point, Robert, pawn to h4, if it's ever captured, uh, Magnus will smile. He'll love that. He'll happily throw a pawn away. White's pawn structure will be totally ruined. With queens on the board, you cannot allow that. The black mm. queen will happily, uh, at some point, sneak over towards the king side. The black knight will have access to some outposts. So a lot of viewers at home might be wondering, why pawn to h4 for black? It's a pawn sacrifice. You're giving it away. But uh, no, you're breaking the opponent's structure. And Wow, I'm really surprised Magnus no, didn't me. go for it. But... That's me. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, showing, I'm showing what's happening if this game... He did not go for this. Maybe he's going to go for it later, but I just wanted to you know, highlight that F4 and the dark square. So B5 uh, was played to... No, I guess, David, you are correct. He didn't go for it, but is it going anywhere? I guess is the question, Tanya. I want to just highlight the idea behind this last move, b5. I think after h4, Dennis intended to play queen to c4, which is why he made this retreating move bishop to b3. We've been talking about the different trades in the position, that how a queen trade would actually favor white. So b5 was a really nice prophylactic move by Magnus, taking away a key square, which would have forced a trade because it's not only offering that queen exchange, but also that f7 weakness, uh, which is why Magnus did not rush with h4, played b5, controlling the square, and now uh, Dennis is offering a bishop trade on d5. And I think if Magnus picks this up, are you going to uh, go into a king pawn ending? Will you calculate that? Well, none of that. Neither of the players want it. Magnus steps back, attacking the h3 pawn. The king comes back, and we're expecting that move h4 to land about now. Especially if Magnus wants to win this game, or if he wants to keep any winning chances alive. But... Feels like hesitation here, Robert. Indecision from uh, the world number one. Magnus just drops his king back. Doesn't necessarily improve things. He's coming towards the center, hinting he might take the white bishop, but still yet to go for that h4. Um, why do you think he's waiting? Why isn't he pulling the trigger and going for it? Well, thank you for the hint, because I was thinking that knight takes d5 made white's life easy, but you're absolutely correct that especially if the queens come off there, the black king can dart to the center and black may just win the pawn where it lands on d5. So white needs to be very careful 
I'm not so sure about some of these decisions uh, from both players, frankly. But the pawn on b4, is it a weakness? Is it a strength? You do get a pawn on a dark square. Your bishop can't help defend that later on. But that also uh, freezes black's pawn on a light square. So your bishop can go after that. Oh, this is uh, Magnus Carlsen. Will he push? Will he press? Tanya, it does feel like his style of endgame here. But is there enough life left? And that's the big question. Is there enough life left? Are there enough pieces left? And to my eyes, it just feels like you don't have enough resources to make that much of it. But that said, with this bishop on d5 still under pin, with this bishop on d5, always this trade being offered, I think this is the best position that Magnus has had all game. And it just comes down to how ambitious will he feel? Does he want to play this out till the very Whoa. end? Does he want to go into an Armageddon? Or is... Dennis Lazovic getting ambitious. F4 was not a move on my radar. Oh, Robert, I see the expression on your face. I think it matches mine. I mean, this feels desperate. F4 looks ambitious, but it's also going to weaken the White King. The White Pawn structure is never going to be intact anymore. Huge, huge gamble there from Dennis Lazovic with two minutes left. And I think for Dennis, he was tired of sitting and waiting, feeling like Magnus was getting the upper hand slowly but surely. But F4 here, and even if you swap pawns on this square, that now the dark squares are really vulnerable in a move like Queen C7. Maybe you could start with Queen C7 in some of these positions as well, because the White King is exposed also on the second rank. So I don't know about that decision. The uh, engine, the evaluation bar, it says that it was incorrect. But maybe it will pay off because it does muddy the water so it's not just one-sided in Magnus's favor. Or idea on the board. Uh, I like the fact that Dennis pre-moved G takes F4 because every second counts at this point, down to two minutes. And Queen C7 hitting that pawn, just hinting at coming in and behind. That's the most uncomfortable thing in chess when an opponent's queen is down, uh, kind of in your grill, down on the first second ranks. And uh, I mean pretty much unstoppable the black queen is coming in one direction or the other yes white can go and take the b5 pawn but you might just get checkmated along the way so um you have to be really careful now this is where queen and knight if they get to attack together will be so dangerous right tanya white's bishop might not be able to participate in the defense on the dark squares yeah, some really big committal decisions taken by Dennis the last couple of moves. And I think what he's calculating right now is, can he force matters? Can he go e5, forcing the trade on d3? But you have to be really careful, uh, for, sorry, forcing the trades on d5. You have to be super careful because that allows Black's queen to infiltrate. You might lose the a3 pawn with checks. And then are you in time to give perpetuals? He doesn't go for it. He falls back with the queen, defending that f4 pawn. Robert, you don't like this move. Well, the blue arrow tells the full story here. Queen d6 freezes white. The queen went to the pawn f4's defense. Now, queen on d6 threatens. Knight takes e4 because the bishop on d5 is pinned. And in certain endgames, you can either just take this bishop on d5. King e7, it was a miss. This deserves the x. Sometimes I throw that x out the window and say, no, that's a perfectly fine move. Queen d6, not easy to play because... Uh, Using a pin, but walking into uh, potential forks and things of that nature are not easy. But I do feel like Dennis is in trouble here. I don't really care what the engine says. It's the, the position of the White King. It's that the uh, white pieces feel a bit clumsy. He needs to do something fast. Otherwise, he's just going to lose. He's also down now to just 53, 52 seconds. We saw the first clue as well that Dennis is getting nervous on the, on the camera. Uh, I'm just watching him there. There was a slight almost imperceptible shake of the head, suddenly scratching his head as well. He's realizing all oh, this, no natural moves and 40 seconds left. Again, the clock is ticking. Magnus exerting the upper hand yet again on the clock. And Tanya, you mentioned it. When you're low on time, it's natural. You want to force the issue and he's going for it now. He's trying to force the trade of knight for bishop. What do you think? Uh, is this going to save Dennis? Well, the eval bar helps us. Turns out that it is a right moment and the right decision. The big question to me at that moment was that if Black was to capture on d5, give checks with the queen. When Black wins that a3 pawn, that side pawn that white has, can Black's king be under danger? Are there enough checks? Is there a perpetual? But I think with Magnus's king now placed on e7, these lines work out for Dennis. He's just going to capture the d5 pawn. Magnus, if he comes in with the queen, starts getting greedy. I think there's a perpetual against the e7 king here. 
There's just one thing that Dennis needs to be alert about. If he brings his king to the third rank, there could be a sneaky check on b3 trying to create a pass pawn. So Dennis, he has a drawing mechanism of his own. The black king is in actually in a bad position because once the black queen leaves, queen d6 to b8 and back to d6, you know, put it on a yo-yo string, it's going to deliver a draw. But Magnus, he poses a really challenging question to Dennis now. Can you trade queens? Because that could be a losing king and pawn in the game, and Dennis has 30 seconds to figure it out. Wow, what a tough decision now, Dennis. He has to risk... Either he has to trust Magnus and dodge the queen trade, or he has to risk a king and pawn in game. Queen to c5 check instead. I think a wise decision. If in doubt, take the safer option. King and pawn in games are pure calculation. It's move by move. You're either winning or losing or drawing, like, nothing in between. You can't just wing it. So queen to c5 check. Now the black king, uh, Tanya, you mentioned it's not entirely safe. Do you think it's going to step forward? Is Magnus going to be feeling brave? Wow, there we go. <laughs> he answers the question for me. And a mistake by Dennis. He moves his own king forward, but this gives Magnus the time to actually infiltrate with his queen. And now I think the point is that he can go pawn hunting because black's king is going to march up the light squares and be safe. And there might not be a perpetual then. That's exactly what's happening here. But the players, they don't have any blue arrows. They don't have an evaluation bar to decide, telling them that this is the moment. But for Dennis Lazvik, he's been hanging on by a thread for the last bunch of moves here. Queen d3 check. And as you said, Tanya, the king, by thread and needle, can use those light squares. And it is going to be a problem for white. And the king g3, what a natural move to play to avoid any kind of queen trade. Queen d5 was going to offer queen trade with black's king in a favorable spot. David, will Magnus find queen d3 first and king f5 second? Yes, because Robert, I want to point out, don't play king f5 now. If you play king f5, enter with the black king, you lose on the spot. The white pawn will step forward to e6 with a discovered check. And Ooh. you have to retreat with the king taking this pawn. You get mated in the center of the board. So uh, process of elimination, you cannot advance your king first. You have to go for a check and only then, once your queen is safe, drive forward with your own king it's a race between kings right now and uh magnus we think we, he's gonna go for it do you see the blue arrow here g5 oh. check i assume if pawn takes you there might be queen c4 is that uh, one of those ideas that you can play to force the queens off the board and get a pass pawn that is incredibly <laughs> deep and it goes to show that pawn quality it often outpaces pawn quantity and especially an end game like this g5 check is played i'm gonna freak out because that just looks impossible there are no protectors of that square and white has two pieces covering it we're all going to fall out of our chairs if g5 <laughs> check is played but magnus has 25 seconds always look for checks first that's the moral of the story either they're very good or you rule them out and you look for something uh, better but okay he's really going low on the clock he plays the more natural move king to f5 missed opportunity maybe winning there some checkmates or queen trades and now wow blue arrow says the best move to keep the balance the only move is to give away the pawn and dennis has done it he's going for perpetual check can the black king escape from the white queen's gaze right now Ooh, no more check suddenly why is he sacrificed the pawn why is this genius because of the king march now it's dennis being brave and adventurous with the white king yeah I, I didn't see another check and i was really surprised but like you said the black queen needs to defend all these checks and he goes pawn hunting, but now there's got to be a perpetual. Now you start just checking the king, and you don't allow black's queen. You probably give a check from c5, making sure that the black queen cannot come to defense. He does exactly it. That. We're going to be careful, Dennis. The black queen can swoop back to block some of these checks, as she just does there. And Dennis, did he miss that one? He leant back in his chair. Two seconds. He's playing purely on the increment now, shaking his head. The black king is going to slide away, slink away to safety, and the white king might get checkmated. Be careful here. Wow, what is a queen trade? What an offer. And it's a draw. So it was brilliant by Dennis Lazarus. Apparently, this is a hold, but not after that movement. He had to play b5 a moment ago. Now it's too slow. Start a race, Dennis Lazarus, but he had no time to calculate, shaking his head. Now the black pawns are going to march forward to victory. Heartbreak. He was one accurate move away. So close, but Magnus is going to do it. Endgame magic again. There we and go. Magnus, Magnus Carlson. He does it. He gets the win in, and that was.